Hey guys, just thought I'd do my daily vlog. I'm just heading back to my car today, and uh, today was a safe day. As you guys know, I've been working here for a little while, and um, I have to apologize, there's a bit of a storm coming today, and so if there's a bit of wind noise in the microphone. Uh, dead cats are only as good as, they're good, I don't know. I don't know how good are dead cats. I guess you're gonna tell me. So we'll find out in post if this is unusable footage, hopefully it's not. Anyways, today I've been working on uh, one of my projects, the Carbon Zero Building Project, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what a Carbon Zero Building is. So, through some of the work I've done on Verge Permaculture, or with Verge Permaculture, we've hosted several incredibly smart people over the years, one of whom is Chris Magwood, and I've actually interviewed him in our channel several times before, and so I'm gonna put a link to his videos up here. There'll probably be a couple of cards that come up as um, I'm talking here, just the different videos that he's talked about. And one of his projects over the years has been around the construction of Carbon Zero projects. In fact, he just did a thesis on it. And in one of the upcoming videos, I'm gonna end up interviewing him and talking about his Carbon Zero thesis, which talks exactly about what I'm gonna talk about today, at least in the, the short version of it anyways. And so, when we're thinking about buildings and the amount of carbon that they produce, we actually have to delineate it out into the amount of carbon that is used in the construction of the building materials, as well as how to get the materials to site, so how much fuel was used to deliver those materials. And then there's also the operational carbon, which is how much carbon is used to actually power and heat the house. And so the project that we're working on is the design of a house that uses very little carbon in the materials. In fact, if we do our job right, the, the building itself is going to actually be a carbon sequestering mechanism. In, in other words, the building materials are going to store carbon for the life of the building, which is a really neat concept and one that I haven't heard too many people talk about in the past. And so while this building is in operation, it's going to be built of materials that are going to allow um, the removal of carbon over the long haul because we've chosen materials that are basically plant-based. And so as a result of them being plant-based materials, plants are made, up, made out of cellulose, cellulose is made out of carbon, and it means that that carbon is not decomposing and going back up into the atmosphere. So that's kind of cool. And if you're like me, um, that was a new concept and I never really considered it before. And so some of the materials that we're gonna use include wood fiber, cellulose, obviously the timbers that are being used in the construction of the building. And um, we can even get really creative about the concrete that we use because there's different types of concrete and we can actually specify materials that um, allow the concrete to be a lot uh, less burdensome on the environment. And so as we go through this project, I'll talk about the different building materials that we're going to use in order to make them carbon zero. Now, in addition to that, there's also operational carbon, which is really important to consider. Namely, how are you getting the energy to power the house? And so we constantly, or we think about operational energy usually as electricity, but there's all the heat that goes into the construction of the building. There's all the heat that goes into keeping the building warm. And so in order to minimize the amount of energy that the building uses, it's really important that we get a super energy efficient envelope, which is where a lot of the design thinking has gone into the building that we're currently designing. And so we're building a double wall system um, with some pretty unique layers in there. And so one of the things that we're doing here at the Green Building Technologies is we're actually gonna build a sample wall panel, which I'll eventually show to you guys, which is going to allow us to get probably pretty close to passive house standards, which basically means it'll be able to operate on almost no energy, which I'm really excited about. And as a result of that, it means that 
will be able to heat and power this house, likely with a solar array that's gonna cost probably around $30,000. So imagine building a house really energy efficient with these materials that allow you to basically pre-purchase all of your fuel for the rest of the life of that house for 30 grand. Now, 30 grand sounds like a lot of money, but this means that you won't have any utility bills pretty much for the rest of the life of the building. No heating bills, no power bills. I think that's just really, really cool. The house itself is still gonna be grid tied, but in reality, it's probably gonna send more power back to the grid than it's gonna consume, which is also a really kind of unique idea to really wrap your head around it. Now, because we're building the, this building standard, the prototype house that we're gonna be building is going to actually have an open house. There's going to be tours going through it. We're gonna have sample wall assembly so people can see how these things go together. And uh, really trying to get people on board with this idea. And so far, what's really cool about this is that the cost of building this structure is gonna be almost the same and it could actually be less in terms of total cost to build it, which I think is really neat. And if that wasn't enough, I'm working on another project right now, which is also leading edge. It's basically another house essentially that's being built to the living building standard or living building challenge, which is another really hard design project. And what is turning out to be the case is that when we choose materials that are really low in embodied carbon, we end up selecting materials that have no red list chemicals in them. Now red list chemicals are basically chemicals that are known carcinogens. And if you've done any kind of work on buildings or retrofits or anything like that, you'll know that a lot of our building products are completely full of horrible chemicals. And so to be able to build a structure that has no red list chemicals in it is something that's really important to me as a dad and somebody who's pretty health conscious because who wants to spend all this time in a building knowing that it's full of building products that can potentially kill or cause enormous sickness in your life. So there's all these really unique and interesting benefits to carbon, carbon zero buildings. They're energy efficient, they're comfortable, they have no red list chemicals, they, um, they're about the same price or less expensive, um, they've got the feel good feeling of, of knowing that they're good for the environment. And depending on where carbon pricing goes in the future, you may end up getting a credit as a result of all the carbon that you're saving, both in the embodied carbon of the building, but also in the long-term operational costs of the building itself. One last benefit that I wanna talk about, which a lot of people don't really realize, is that when you build these energy efficient buildings, you end up with less mechanical components. So you have a smaller mechanical system, you've got less moving parts, and ultimately you've got a more reliable building. There's actually, as I'm talking, there's actually like five or six other benefits as well, but this video is getting really long and I've got to get back to my family. So as we go through the design project, I'm going to be showing you the different components, the selection, the materials, and then once the building goes up, we're actually going to go out on site. We're going to interview the developer as well as the builder and the homeowner, and we're going to get a sense of what their take is on this carbon zero building. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you found this interesting, give me a thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.